Welcome back. Today, I'm joined by Aram Gregorian, otherwise known as Four Weeks to the Beach on Instagram. And Aram is a certified nutrition coach and a personal trainer. And he is also an Instagram ninja with his to the point posts that always have me saying, damn, I wish I had said that. So Aram, thank you so much for coming on. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you do and who you help? Uh, thank you for having me. So what I do is I remind people of what they probably already know. And who do I work with? I work with anybody that needs help. Um, and again, I always try to keep it su super simple. And that's why I just kept that simple. I think at the end of the day, coaches that over explain themselves are probably not very comfortable with the material they're trying to explain. And what I was taught from a sales perspective at a very young age was the person that speaks first after presenting information is the person who loses. So what I've always learned is none of the information that we as coaches give to our clients is not something that they can't Google on their own. They just don't want to spend the time to do it. So it's our job to take that information, package it in a way that makes sense for them, interpret it so that they can be applied to their specific situation and then guide them along the process of actually applying it to their own lifestyle. So at the end of the day, none of what we're doing is rocket science. And I think it's something that I have to remind my clients of all the time when they either get frustrated or they're not happy with the length of time it's taking for them to derive the result they're looking for. And really it's a gentle nudge to remember that you've had X amount of years of doing whatever you felt like doing to yourself. We're trying to unwind the clock a little bit. So if you're not patient with it, then you're going to be the one that's frustrated, not me. I've achieved what I wanted to achieve. And really the idea behind Four Weeks to the Beach was, I want everybody living a lifestyle that's so holistically good on average, that if they have an event or a beach vacation, or they just wanna look and feel a little bit better in a smaller, shorter term window, they have the tools in their toolbox to be able to amplify their intensity, whether it's from a nutritional standpoint or from a training standpoint, to kind of get to a point where they feel better within those four to six weeks and they can put a product out into the world that they're confident about. It's not a quick fix. I know that the, I, the, the name itself sounds quick fixy. You know, for, am I going to be ready for the beach in four weeks? No, maybe in a year and four weeks. Yeah. Maybe in two years and four weeks, depending on how much damage you've done to yourself. But it's not unattainable. It's just a matter of wrapping your mind around the fact that results just take time. And it's it's consistency. And our job as coaches is to remind you of that consistency. That's really what we are. I love that. Very well said, as usual. <laughs> Um, so in the space that I work with, my, most of my clients are women and um, a lot of them are convinced that eating less and exercising more is going to get them the results that they want. And they come to me and they're just stuck. And I'm sure you have the same situation. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on that and how you approach this type of client. I think the reality is that for so many decades, it's been, it's been told to women that the expectation is that you're small and dainty and that you shouldn't eat a lot and you shouldn't lift weights and you should be like a little ballerina and you should do yoga and Pilates and that's the only way you can be long and lean. And There's just so many buzzwords that get thrown at women. I mean, there's women specific protein, there's women specific vitamins. Well, I somewhat agree to the vitamin aspect of it because, yeah, maybe when some women need more vitamin D or some women need more zinc or magnesium. But by and large, really, the biggest difference between men and women is the hormonal profile of that individual and really what their pain tolerance is or their discomfort tolerance. Now, women scientifically can actually handle way more volume in the gym than a man can. Yeah. So the way that I would train a woman is I might lighten the load relatively to them a little bit, but I would actually push them way harder because they actually have a threshold and a motor that a man doesn't have. Now, a man has more testosterone than a woman does, so we are a little bit better and maybe more efficient at growing muscle. So the idea that a woman is going to, let's call it, eat 1,600 calories and lift three full body days a week and they're going to turn into what I look like, I've been trying to achieve this body for over 25 years. And not only is it a tough thing to achieve initially, it's a 
even tougher thing to maintain because the amount of work required to keep 12% body fat and a 250 pound frame on a five foot eight human being, like I'm not a big person, but I've turned myself into a bigger person because I eat 3,200 calories a day exhaustingly. And I go to the gym five to six days a week and I empty out the tank on every set and rep. And I put myself into uncomfortable positions. So sometimes when I'm asked to go out and socialize, I say no because I prioritize my health and wellness over that momentary pleasure. Now, do I say yes to alcohol and bad food every once in a while? Of course I do, I'm human. I don't wanna be on stage, I'm not taking pictures. So depending on where my mind is and where my goal is, I retrofit my lifestyle and my habits towards that goal. And I think for women, we, they've just been sold this idea that if you eat less and if you exercise more, you're just going to keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And I think anybody with any logic or a brain in their head can look at that and say, at some point that has to end. So as the body adapts to lower and lower calories, at some point, weight loss will stall. So if you started at 2000 calories and you worked your way down to 1200 and you lost seven or eight pounds and now the weight loss is stalled, this is a very common problem. What you need to do in this case now is to live in that area for a little while from a caloric standpoint, and then start to recalibrate your approach and slowly build your calories back up. Because the only way to go down from that point is very uncomfortable. Because if you're at 12 and you're not losing any weight at 1,200, the next step is slashing another 500 or so. Now you're talking about 700 calories. And I don't know too many people that would be comfortable eating 700 calories a day. I mean, most... 10 to 12 year old girls are eating 1200 calories as prescribed by a nutritionist. So the fact that an adult woman who has job stressors, kids stressors, relationship stressors, you know, may have diminished hormonal function because of three or four kids or from aging or premenopausal, like there's a lot of stress. And to put somebody into an even stressful, a more stressful state by feeding them less fuel it just doesn't seem like an environment conducive to overall sustainable success. And again, to counteract that with weightlifting, I have yet to see a woman balloon to my size in even 10 years. I mean, the women that I know, I, now that I live in San Diego, I go to a lot of these bodybuilding gyms and there's female bodybuilders in there. But some of these women are in their late forties and it's taken them 20 years to build that physique with, a lot of regularity and a lot of consistency the same way that I've exhibited. So the idea that you're going to go do two hit classes a week and then play with 10 pound dumbbells, it's just not possible. And you don't have the chemicals internally to get to that point. So you're fighting a lot of battles when it comes to building muscle. And that's the number one priority you should be attacking when you're walking into a gym. It's not to sweat. It's not to jump up and down and get your heart rate up all the time. It's to improve your movement so that you can age with grace and to improve your strength and build muscle because that's the, that's the organ of longevity. That's what's going to keep you from having osteoporosis as you age as a female. It's going to hopefully save some of your hormonal dysfunction as you age, as you enter menopause. And it's going to become a sponge for food. So it's going to give you a little bit more flexibility on what you can eat. Yeah, I love that point. I'm like, ladies, get in there and lift if you can eat more. <laughs> you know? if, that, if that's the only sales point to lifting weights, <laughs> I would be fine with that. Like, if somebody said, if you won't go from three days a week to six days a week of gym time, and it can allow you for three or four extra more fun meals a week, I'm sold hook, line, and sinker from just that. Because now, if I want to go out to that social event, if I want to go have that piece of cheesecake after dinner, and if I want to just have, you know, eight bags of chips one night because I feel like it, because I feel sorry for myself because I've had a long day, I have the flexibility to do that with very little risk to having any problems the next day, aside from maybe digestively because my stomach can't handle it. Right. <laughs> yeah, I do have that. Um... You know, I still, I, for a lot of my clients, it's just that mentality of, of eating low, you know, very low calories. And so bringing on more calories, they're like, 
they just think they're just going to get huge. So it's definitely a slow process of bringing on these calories. And they're like, well, I'm just going to get, you know, I'm just going to gain weight. And I'm like, well, let's look at all the other positives of what you're going to get by having more food in your body. Sleep is going to be better. Libido is going to be better. You're going to have more energy. You're going to like life. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> so you gain a couple of pounds, like what we can take that off, but let's get you getting feeling better first and get you in a place. And then, so once I can kind of sell them on that, it gets a little bit easier but getting getting there is a, it was a bit of a process so well I, I think there's an there's an acute effect that happens when you start eating less well I mean we've all gone through it right when your yeah. stomach is empty you don't feel bloated you don't feel distended typically your clothes fit a little bit better right when you wake up first thing in the morning that's the best you'll feel all day usually yeah. right so after a bowel movement when you weigh yourself and you shouldn't be weighing yourself every day by the way listeners when you weigh yourself after that first bowel movement in the morning, before you've had anything to eat, that's the lightest and leanest you will be all day long. Now, pump water into you, pump coffee into you, start letting gravity do its thing, and then pump four, three or four meals into you, 0% chance that you weigh what you weighed in the morning at night. So the idea that you get bloated from food, is it really bloating? Is it just your stomach filling up with food? Now, if it's truly bloating, take a look at the food quality you're eating. and Is it working for you? And the idea that you're always going to feel empty from a stomach perspective is just impossible. So if you look at most competitors or fitness people or models, they're not shooting their photographs at nine o'clock at night. And if they are, they're not eating all day long, or they're not sleeping the day before sleeping until the photo shoot and then eating or then shooting as soon as they wake up because they want to capture that leanness that people feel as soon as they wake up. So having a distended bloated belly is pretty normal as long as it's not being caused by gastrointestinal distress. So I think one of the things that I always tell women when they don't feel well in their clothes at four o'clock in the afternoon is I don't expect you to. I don't expect you to throw that bikini on at four and go strut your stuff after you've had three meals and six conference calls. If you, want to, if you want to do it, obviously either you have to accept the fact that you're going to be a little distended or Maybe plan ahead a little bit better and eat some foods that are lighter for you that day. But that doesn't mean don't eat at all and drink nothing but water or eat air just because you want to go look a little bit better for those five minutes. Because let me promise you something. Nobody's staring at you the way that you think they are. Nine out of 10 times, most people are so self-conscious and so insecure that they're really only paying attention to how they look. And if they're looking at you, that's probably a good thing because they're attracted to you. So enjoy it. <laughs> very well said <laughs> yeah I mean I was stuck in that whole you know dichotomy I, I'm 53 so I grew up in the 80s and the 90s when it was low fat this and then it was Atkins and there was just so much you know and then more and more products brought onto the market and like you know I don't know if you remember the chips and those gave you gastric distress like it like there's just so much that's so marketed to women for what we want, and, and you know, the same for men, but do we want these results? You know, the, these amazing products that are going to give us energy all day and reduce our bloating and we're, we're going to feel amazing and our skin is going to look great. Well, fuck yeah, I want this. I, yes, take my money, you know? So I spent all that money and, and did all the stuff and it didn't work, but I was like, oh, cause I didn't try hard enough. Right. And then you put it back onto yourself and then look for the next thing. And it was just like, finally, it was like, what am I doing? You know? If you're, if you're running at 100 miles an hour down the, long, down the wrong road, you're not going to get to where you want to go. Just because you're expending energy into something doesn't mean that it's the appropriate energy in the appropriate direction. So that's why, I mean, as much as I, I don't love plugging my service or your service or any coach's service, use us if you need us, but let's be very realistic. Nobody taught us how to eat. We learned how to eat watching our parents eat. And I'm from Russia. So what was my diet consistent of? It was meat and starch and vodka and very little water. And I could drink soda as often as I wanted because my parents couldn't give two shits because they were never home because we were immigrants and we were poor and they worked 55 hours a day. So when I came off the bus at nine years old and I was by myself, what did I eat? I ate kid cuisine. Now it's not because my parents didn't have any respect for me and they wanted me to get fat or oblong as a child. It's just because they didn't have the time to devote to sitting down and actually making me a home cooked meal, which at that point 
probably wouldn't have been that nutritious anyway, because in Russia, they didn't have fresh vegetables all the time or fresh fruits. We had a lot of meat. We had a lot of starch. That's what we ate. Now, none of that stuff is inherently bad for you, but human beings are omnivores. We're supposed to eat all of it. Sometimes certain vegetables bother certain people. Sometimes certain protein sources bother certain people's stomachs. You have to do that inventory on your own to figure out what foods make you feel specifically the best and don't eat those in abundance. That's it. And every once in a while, if you're going to be okay with that GI distress from eating the pizza or having the pasta or eating the ice cream, because you know, you're probably a little lactose or gluten or whatever dairy sensitive. So be it pop up gas X and hope for the best, but you're not eating that stuff every single day. You're not making that choice over and over. And I always tell my clients, if you're going to choose a meal number per day, I usually settle on four with people because that's a, that's usually three full meals and a snack. So if it's four meals a day times seven days a week, that's 28 meals per week. If you control 85% of those, that's 23 meals a week that you have control over. And if the other five meals are eaten out or eaten in a, in a setting that's not prepared by you, that's a pretty good start. You're not going to look like a supermodel, but you're going to feel a hell of a lot better than you felt before. You have control over all the ingredients you're putting in. So you can be the, the master and commander of your own plate. And then it all falls back on you. If you feel good with those 23 meals a week, great. If you need to amplify that a little bit to look and feel a little bit better, you can. If you want to let your reins down a little bit and relax because you're on a vacation, drop it down to 19. But it's really just, it, it, it's understanding how much you're putting in relative to how much you're putting out and what type of energy expenditure are you really using? Are you a cardio bunny? Are you somebody who's doing Pilates? Are you somebody who lifts weights recreationally, but doesn't really understand how to properly? And all the evidence in the world has really pointed to everybody of all shapes, sizes, and colors and, and sexes should be lifting weights as their number one source of exercise. And then everything else can come off of that. So a little bit of cardio, a little bit of yoga, a little bit of Pilates, but that's not your meat and potatoes. That's not what's going to change your physique. This idea of toning, toning just means you're building muscle mass and then revealing it with a diet. That's all that's happening. You, you can't show muscle that you don't have. So if you keep constantly cutting calories and doing more cardio, you just become a smaller, softer version of your old self. Now, I don't think that most women had that intention when they started that protocol right? They wanted to have some muscle on their back. They wanted to see some hips. They wanted to see some delineation between their shoulder and their, and their bicep. They wanted to see maybe a sweep in their quads and their hamstrings. They wanted to, to, to look like they actually have worked out. But if all you do is do cardio and eat less, yeah, you'll lose weight until you don't. And you're just going to soften up as a human being because your body will always attack muscle first because it doesn't need it to survive, but it needs fat to survive. So it's going to hold on to that for the very last possible second that it doesn't need it. That's why when you see women who are stage lean, who have abs and who have veins in their, in their stomachs, those women are not healthy. Even they'll tell you they're not healthy. There's an ambulance in the back of every single bodybuilding show that's out there for a reason, because people collapse. You're on very minimal fats, which is horrible for your hair, skin and nails and hormones. Most of these women lose their, their menstrual cycles. They lose their libido. So when you look like a statuesque female, you're not functioning as a female whatsoever. Your hair is falling out. Your nails are brittle. Your skin is horrible. You're probably constantly fighting some type of a, of a pimple or a rash or something. You're emaciated and you're starving. And for what? To take the picture and to get on stage, to get the bronze trophy. Now, if that's your goal, great, do it. I'll respect it. But I don't think most females had that in mind when they started. So if you don't have the ability to live that type of a lifestyle, if you're a mother of four and you're a full-time employee somewhere, do what you know you can fit into your lifestyle. If you know you can prepare meals and that's what you're best at, put your eggs in that basket and get really good at controlling your nutrition. If you know that you have the means to have somebody else control your nutrition, hire a meal prep service, have all your meals portioned out for you eat those two to three times a day, have dinner with your family, done. Now you can put all your eggs into the exercise basket, but get really good at one thing before you try to tackle all these tasks. And the tasks don't have to be crazy. It's water, it's steps, it's sleep, 
it's exercise, and it's food consumption. It's five basic things. And take the thing that you suck at the most and work on that until you don't suck at it. I love that. <laughs> what it comes yeah. down to. <laughs> I have mad respect for those people that do get on stage because it is, I don't think people understand like how insane it is to, and they give up a lot to do that. And like, it is, it's that one day is, and it literally can change in an hour. And so much is writing on that one time because most, from what I understand, they're judged the night before and then they go on the next day. So like, it's just crazy, like how dialed in something like that has to be, but. Um, very specific, it's very sacrificial. Those people give up their, their lives for at least 12 to 16 months. Yeah. And now again, if that's your goal, you and I can probably bring somebody to that point, right? I mean, I, I have the skill set to do it. I just don't think that that's what you intended. So, you know, a lot of times I'll get women that maybe, in their opinion, have a couple pounds to lose. So usually I'll try to change that narrative with that female and say, do you really have a couple pounds to lose? Or do you want to just fit into your clothes better and change the aesthetic a little bit? Yeah. So when you reframe it that way, that doesn't mean that you have weight to lose. That means that you have to recomposition the way that your body is shaped. That typically means let's put your energy into the gym setting and get really good at lifting weights. Let's back that up with a proper nutritional protocol. Make sure that you're recovering with ample rest. And that really will take care of the problem. You may not see the weight drop on the scale, but I bet if we took circumference measurements on day one and day 90, they would be different and in your favor. Because we're going to see the waist either get smaller or stay the same. We're going to see hopefully the hips and thighs get a little bit more voluminous and a little bit more shapely and stronger. We'll hopefully see the back get a little bit bigger to, have, to grow some lats and some back muscles. And maybe the arms lean out or the legs lean out. That may not translate to any weight loss on the scale whatsoever, but Sometimes women can capture losing fat and building muscle simultaneously if they've never trained with any intensity because yeah. they'll be able to capture those newbie gains that they're called for usually anywhere between two to five years. And a lot of times when you get a woman client who hasn't lifted weights with any real, real intensity and you show her what, blow, what really pushing past that comfort threshold looks like, now they're going to capture some new gains. And now they're going to get a little bit stronger. There's going to be a little bit more confidence and a little bit more pep in your step. And when they walk into the gym, they're not just sprinting straight for the treadmill because that's all they know how to do. They know how to deadlift now. They know how to squat now. They can walk in and use the same weights that the guys are using. And yeah. that's what I want to see. Like, I don't want to see women be afraid of the weight room because there's a bunch of me walking around in there. I want women to come in and do all the same stuff that I'm doing because that's empowering. Yeah. That's, that, that, that sizes us up and shows us the, they can do it too, because A, I'm not judging you. I want to encourage you as a man. Some men probably do, but I don't care about them and they're not men anyway. But it's also empowering other women to say that you don't need to live on the, on the treadmill or on the elliptical. You can come right into here and do all the same stuff that we're doing with, this, with probably a better level of proficiency because your body's built better for it. Yeah, I, it's so exciting for me as a coach to give somebody a newbie, right? Newbie gains I, all day because <laughs> I'm like, can we just like, let's do a little adjustment to your training, you know, let's try this and, and then, um, you know, I bring them into some weightlifting and then the ones that are like, you know, have a little bit more commitment to it, they just start to see they're like, oh my God. And then my, you know, they start to see a difference in the, it's the body recomp, you know, and, and yeah, they they might not be losing weight, but who, I'm like, who gives a shit if you're losing weight, you're losing fat. We want to, I don't care if you stay the same weight, but look at you girl, like your waist again is smaller, you know, you're, you're losing. So yeah, it's a newbie gains or a thing. <laughs> it's exciting. And I think once a woman yeah. sees that, that's where the buy-in occurs. And listen, ladies, that may take three, six, nine, 12, 15 months, depending on where you are, where you started, what your history of dieting was, how much fat to muscle you have on your body currently, how much time you're able to dedicate to those changes. So there's a lot of factors here. And I think, you know, now that I've gotten some more followers and I've built up my presence online a little bit, I get a lot more questions. And a lot of the questions that I get are always very one dimensional. It's how do I do this? And my answer to everybody is it depends. And it depends on a laundry list of things that you probably don't care enough to listen to. Yeah. So until you, and I always tell people, I have no problem hopping on the phone with you for 20 minutes if you're willing to dedicate that time. And I'll explain to you some base level things 
But if you truly want to understand, you have to immerse yourself in it. And that's why I charge what I charge and do what I do, because I'm investing in you just as much as you're investing in me. You have to show up for your phone calls. You have to show up and be present for your workouts. If you're just going through the motions of all this stuff, that's going to probably slow down the process. Now, does that mean that I'm a bad coach or does that mean that you just didn't do the work that was laid out for you? Because at that point, it just becomes, here's your roadmap. We'll check on it every single week, but you still have to show up and play the game. Yeah. I can, I'm going to cheer you on from the sideline. I'll provide all the support you need, whether it's emotional or scientific. If you need me to print out research articles to buy into the process, I'll do it. But nine out of 10 times, it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in weeks. It may not happen in months, but at some magic moment, if you stay consistent and you do everything that's told of you, 85 to 90% of the time, it will occur. It's just a matter of how adherent are you truly. And that doesn't mean I'm doing really good Monday through Thursday and then Friday through Sunday. It's like a, it's like a carnival. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think we all fall into that, right? It's go hard Monday through Thursday, you know, salads and soups and shakes Monday through Friday, Thursday. And we're doing our workouts and we're getting into the gym. And then Friday, we're so damn tired and exhausted because we've spilled out everything we've had that the wine starts coming into play, the charcuterie board starts getting thrown in front of you, the crackers, the events, the late nights and the poor sleep over the weekend where you should be catching up on the sleep you didn't get during the week. The workouts are gone or out the window unless it's some bullshit high intensity class that you didn't fuel for or that you showed up hungover for. That's not the way to do it. It's a, it's a seven day a week, 365 day pursuit that has sprinklings of breaks in it. And if you approach it in a phasic way, which means sometimes we're maintaining our weight and working on skill sets, sometimes we're building our weight to grow muscle, and then sometimes we're able to peel back, cut calories a little bit, increase activity for a little while to yeah. maybe reduce some fat loss, but eventually we can't stay in that state forever. That's going to be very damaging to your metabolism and to your hormone function and to your mood and to your sleep. We don't want to do that. Yeah. I love it. Perfect. 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 Um, I know I loved your, your things that you wish women knew, right? That was a great post. Um, and I'm going to link your bio to your Instagram and to your website, um, onto the show notes. Is there, um, is there anything else that you'd like to add on that you want to say? One of the biggest things that I think I see a problem in the female community is they watch other females do certain things and they adapt or they adopt those practices for themselves. Ladies, don't just do whatever your friend is doing because it worked for her because you don't know all of the underlying things that have happened to get her where she is. And if you really truly want to invest yourself in understanding, then ask a lot of questions before you start keto or intermittent fasting or whatever Barry's bootcamp class you want to start, understand what happened there and how she got to where she got. And better yet, ask her that same question six months from now. Because if she's been able to maintain that level of success, then clearly it's not just a momentary lapse. It's actually a sustainable habit change. Because if you can't see yourself doing something 120, 240, 360 days down the, year, down the line, don't start it now because your failure rate is going to be extremely high. And what happens when you fail? You beat yourself up mentally. This doesn't work. Why do I even bother? I should just stay fat, whatever. And then it's this wave of pity and it's this wave of victim mentality as opposed to I did everything right for seven days and I didn't get what I wanted. Okay, try for another seven days. Try for another 14 days. Try for another 28 days. And then stop thinking about how long it's going to take you to get there. Worry about what you're doing on a daily basis to propel you in the right direction. Like I had 4,000 calories the other day because I felt like it. I woke up bloated. I woke, I didn't weigh myself because I don't have a scale and I don't care. Why, why do that? <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't feel good. I physically didn't feel good. I could tell in the mirror that I was water retentive and I was bloated and I was, not in a good place, but it doesn't derail me from what my mission is that day. It's get back to normal, find your homeostasis again, go to the gym, prep your meals, eat your prep meals and control yourself. That's it. But that has to happen 
day in and day out. And if you slip up one meal or miss one workout or whatever, it doesn't mean throw in the towel and that's it. It's over. It just means get up and start again. And just yeah. do it over and over and over again. And if you need help, there is help out there. There are coaches who aren't just going to take your money and tell you to do something stupid. You know, Kathy and I care. Like we actually, we've invested time and money into our education and we've not only that, but we, we seek out extra information and we, we talk to coaches that are better than we are because we want to find out what they're doing so we can help our own clients. And I always tell all my clients, if I can't get you the help that I need, that you need, I'll send you somewhere else because I don't want you to do this on your own because doing it on your own clearly hasn't worked. And there's not enough of motivation out in the world to help you. It's discipline. It's just, sometimes it sucks, but discipline is the reason why you're a good mom. Discipline is the reason why you're a successful businesswoman. Discipline is the reason why you and your husband have lasted 35 years. It's not motivation. You weren't like, yeah, today's going to be the day that my husband and I have a good day. No, it's, <laughs> I hate his fucking guts today, but I love him. And I love, and I know that we have a family together and I have to stay in the game because that's what I signed up for. That's not motivation. That's because you have to do the work because that's what you signed up for. Self-care is no different. You have a responsibility to yourself when you come out of that womb to take care of your body for as long as you have it because you ain't getting it back. Once it's gone and once it's destroyed, I'm sorry, that's the end of the line. And now you're gonna be part of the medical system, which good luck, that's not a system I wanna be a part of. Absolutely. Very well said. Thank you so much. You've, um, you know, as usual, kill it with your information and the way your style that you deliver it. And um, I aspire to be you one day and just oh, get to the yeah. point with my posts. <laughs> Every time I read, I'm like, darn it. Why didn't I say that? I have to, it takes me, you know, but I love it. My guys, this is, I'll give you a secret. My posts come from a place of frustration. Every time I post something, it's because of a conversation I've had with either a client or somebody online or a person in passing. And it's, if they don't understand something, how do I condense that ability to understand in a way that's going to be digestible on a platform as superficial and as quick as Instagram is? Because we've all seen the videos of everybody working out. We've yeah. all seen the videos of what do I eat in a day? We've all seen the videos of somebody looking really good before and after. But how do we change the perspective and the mindset of that person to then be able to achieve those same things? You can watch, you can go on Instagram and get a million free workouts. And it's get a, all there. It's, it's available to you at nauseam at this point. You're getting information dumped on you through a fire hose. But how do you apply that to your specific lifestyle and situation and that's where coaching becomes crucial because we can help tailor make a plan to you individually based on what you have going on in your life because that's going to be wildly different than that 24 year old instagram model that you're following who lives at home with mom and dad and who gets booty bands sent to her for free online that's not your lifestyle it was 20 years ago when you didn't have a job and you didn't have three kids but that's not who you are anymore so why are you looking at her for advice? She doesn't know who you are and she doesn't give a shit about you. She's not gonna look, she's not gonna ask you what your recent blood work from, your, from a progesterone estrogen standpoint looked like. She's not gonna ask you when's the last time you had a menstrual cycle that was normal. She's not gonna ask you how well was your sleep, how high is your stress? Because she doesn't have any of that, those concerns. She's 24 and the plumbing's working perfect. Yeah. Until it doesn't, she's not going to ever understand. And I know that's weird coming from a man who doesn't have any of the same parts that you do, but I've worked with enough women to understand that you are vastly different from woman to woman and that the hormonal cycle that you have to go through every 28 days is going to be very impactful on how we have to work with you. And we have to understand that as coaches and we have to understand that Certain foods during certain times don't work. Certain levels of exercise intensity during certain weeks of the month aren't going to work. And you have to find a professional who actually gives a shit enough about you to do that effort and work. So that's why Kathy and I exist. <laughs> Very well put. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. And um, ladies and guys, make sure that you follow are um, at four weeks to the beach. I'll link, I'll link him again to the Instagram and his website. And um, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the time.